tell me something about um, when you were growing up, at what point did, what influenced you to, to go into science, and, and what did science mean in those days, what, and what did you think it was going to be, and, and sort of bring us up to date. My mother bought me a chemistry set, a Gilbert chemistry set, uh, at that time, and uh, I also had the privilege of buying chemicals at the drugstore at a cut rate because my father was a physician. And I built quite a large laboratory at home when, even before I went to high school. And uh, uh, that's how I got started. The kind of chemistry at that time was very different from what it is now. It was uh, pouring things from one little test tube to another. Well, some people still do that, but um, we've now moved to a much different era in chemistry where um, things are very much more complex and they involve many more instruments and techniques, including computers, the kinds of things that we're talking about today. Uh, and the contrast uh, between the way I grew up and the way my son grew up is really striking. I started with a Gilbert chemistry set and he started with a computer. He's now doing his doctorate in computer sciences at North Carolina. So he's really uh, uh, into computers at, uh, at a high level. I think that the problem of the tremendous increase in information is more an opportunity than a, pro than a difficulty because it allows you to reformulate ideas which cross uh, quite different areas that could not be crossed before the information was available. The uh, crossing between, say, physics and biology has just really begun in, in a way which makes use of computers. The enormous explosion in information has occurred in science. I think everyone feels that. It is a very great difficulty to keep up, but I found that uh, a combination of reading journals and talking to knowledgeable people really works very well. But it seems to me there's a tremendous advantage to this expansion because it allows areas to move laterally from one uh, science to another in a very interesting and real way. Um, the movement of physics into astrophysics is another area. The merging of elementary particles theory with uh, the ideas of the origin of the universe uh, as a whole. Uh, these uh, crossings uh, are the direct result of the tremendous expansion in knowledge. And as any artist or any scientist will do, uh, in, in, in the best form, it makes one look at nature in a very new and different way. So I, I do not see a disadvantage to it, nor do I see an end to it. I think the expansion will continue. I, I also think the, there's a lack of general education uh, in people who are not taking science, who don't study science, who major, say, in the humanities or social sciences, in their schools, uh, and this means that the political decisions are made by people who do not have a background in science, which I think uh, is, is, is a sort of sad thing. I'm going to teach in, in a year a course which is aimed primarily towards uh, non-scientists and what, they, uh, what I can tell them about uh, chemistry and biochemistry um, in, in forming a background so that they could, if they went into a decision-making process, or if they just wanted to know for their own education uh, what uh, our kind of science is like, the kind of science that I know. As for the future of science, I think that if I were just starting, that I might like to try to tackle the last really big frontier that I know of, and that is uh, how the mind works. It seems to me that's an area where it's very difficult to do very precise experiments, particularly experiments on the single cell or molecular level. But it is an area where almost nothing is known. 
And uh, if I had a lifetime to begin, I might begin there.